Hey, what's up, everybody? Vincent Persichetti here, and welcome to the show. Today, I interviewed Rich McClonus, who's a, a great friend of mine. We, we did a ton of comedy sketches together on YouTube. Um, our two biggest channels that we did together were Stu God Videos and White Boy Vids. So I just wanted to talk to him about comedy and about life and about, you know, pretty much just what's kind of going on with his life. And uh, I think he's got a great story to tell, so enjoy. Today, I decided that I wanted to interview Richie and just kind of talk a little bit more on um, comedy for today. Mm-hmm. We've been, we did comedy videos for what, 30, 40 years? At least. Together. At least. You at know, least. we went our own ways for a little while. Um, you did a little bit on Radio City. Are you, for Brian Reagan? Is yeah. that, did you have seen I that? I watched the first half of that I didn't before get to you see came. It. So, Richie, the one thing I, um, I want to go through is I want to kind of hear a little bit more of your story and just kind of, um, you know, what what got you interested in comedy? What makes you want to, you know, even come and possibly do even a comedy podcast? Mm-hmm. Um, things like that. So I kind of want to start with the the early years mm-hmm. um, before I met you. Um, you know, was there anything there that was like, or certain comedians or anything of humor? <laughs> Richie's giving me a weird face right now. Um, if you wanted to wow. start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Before, I mean, did I even exist before I met you? I don't really know. I don't, I mean, technically, I, depending on who, what you believe in, no. If we look back at it. Yeah. No, I don't think I did much before you and I started making videos. Um, I don't, I have no idea why I got interested in doing it. Um, I, me and Jarrett met, and for reasons I still can't remember, I was... No, 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 no. No, we met before. Yeah, we met before that. And we made videos before that. Yeah, we made a lot of videos. A yeah. whole channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm backwards. So, so yeah, I had n- no interest at all before I met you as far as making my own videos. I probably did, but I didn't know have the means to do it with the video mm-hmm. editing and filming and things like that. Or just didn't think it was plausible, whatever. I was really interested in acting, and I thought... Like, I'd be like, yeah, if I, uh, I could be an actor, I could probably make it. I don't really know. <laughs> and, like, I was really interested in drama, in theater. I took it every elective I could. And then, uh, and that was about it. So I was interested in it, but I had nothing to do with it. And then you met me. I met you. We met each other. At and, the same time. And you were like, hey, I'm Vince. And I was like, I'm Richie. And then we played guitar. And then you're like, yeah, guitar's boring. Let's just film a video. <laughs> Is yeah. that what we did? I'm pretty sure that's what happened. We played guitar to get guitar together, and then I don't remember what words were spoken, but eventually it came to the point where you might have already been, you already made videos with yes. your yes, siblings, and then I was like, oh, I'd love to be in a video, because I like to act, and I think I'm funny. Yeah. And so, um, and I think that's how it got started. And so I filmed a couple videos with you. You more so led that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... I was like, oh, I have this idea for a video. And you're like, okay, maybe we'll film it. And then I was like, I got this idea for a video. And you're like, yeah, we might do that. And then I was like, I'm just going to make my own videos. <laughs> and then so I was, and so I, and then so I made a couple videos. And then I don't know what happened. And then we started making videos together again. Yeah. So from what I remember, it was, it was, we started, do you remember the first video we made together? The, the teen drama? Was that Yeah. The teen drama <laughs> where we're pretending to throw, rocks out of the it made sense to us when we were filming it and then from from pencil to paper nothing was well received as far as the point of the whole video people ended up did watching it though like yeah we saw it yeah and i was like oh but that was about it (laughs) (laughs) it was like yeah we saw it we we're not gonna say we liked it or yeah we can't take it back i'm not gonna lie yeah i mean yeah i was doing comedy videos you know or comedy skits or whatever i was doing those a little bit before you did, we started a channel called Dumb Quality TV, and then when when we met, we were doing jokes, we were doing all this stuff, and mm-hmm. you're really in guitar. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, though. yeah. Then that? you came over about guitar, and we were just like, yeah, we can't play together. This so, like, <laughs> apparently you have to be good to synchronize, or I don't know, I don't know what chord you're in. Yeah, <laughs> it was a whole, it was a whole mess. So then we were just like, yeah, yeah. Then we started doing the videos, and then we want to make our own channel. Mm-hmm. Because at the time, I had my cousin Michael was doing Dumb Quality TV with me and Anthony. So I was like, oh, that's our thing. Let's have a new thing. Yes. So we brought my brother along, 
and we wow, did a, Stu Got Video. Yes. Wow, that is a long time. If you, if we if you take the span of years and you turn it into YouTube channels, it's a long time. No, I know. It's like three. It was Dumb Quality V that you you had mainly. Yeah. I was in a couple of those, and then we. I had I forgot. I helped start that. Stu Got Video. Stu Got Videos. Yeah, yeah you were the, the founding. Three of us. Yeah. And then, um, then I don't know what happened between Stu Got Videos and White Boy Vids. Oh that, no, I know exactly what happened. Yeah. So then. We were doing videos almost every week. Like mm-hmm. every Friday was like Video Friday, and you mm-hmm. would come off the bus, you'd come off of my stop, and the bus driver got mad at me because yeah, she would always get mad because this isn't your stop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we did that, and um, yeah, then you start making videos. But then it got to a point where we would get burnt out. Mm-hmm. At least I was, and I think Anthony was too. And you'd be like, guys, I got this idea. How about I do something that. Vince doesn't want me to do and then I would go uh oh, no let's not do that let's not so then I just like stopped I was like I'm just I don't want to do any more video ideas anymore and I couldn't come <laughs> up with anything and then you were just like all right so then you started white boy vids with mm-hmm. Jerry mm-hmm. that's what it was and then I met I saw it so that was right probably in the middle of 11th grade and then I met Jared that next semester or that current semester and I was like, I need somebody else to do it. And Jared's only qualifications was that he liked Coach Hines' videos from Mad TV with Keegan Michael Key. And I was like, he's in. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> and then so, I think he might have been taking film at the time. Oh, I don't know if that was after the fact. You both took it senior year. So yeah, so I remember. So I stopped doing videos for a mm-hmm. while, and then then you were doing videos. With Jared. So how did that kind of go? Because I wasn't there for any of that type of stuff. I I think it was the exact same thing that happened, but flip-flopped, like with you and me. So it was, I met Jared, and I was like, I want to make more videos. And no, here's how it started. Here's how it actually started. Oh, I can hear that perfectly. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Jared had to make a video for film class. And his video, and I feel like I re- honestly knew Jarrett for like a week and a half. And so I, I was like, I don't even know this guy. And he's like driving me around Shelby Township looking for spots to film. Yeah. And it's it was the actual Disturbing the Peace video where we go around and we play <laughs> Wonder, 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 Wonder Wall. No, no, I don't think it was Wonder Wall. It was the, um, the step off that ledge, my friend. Yeah. You it, could, what is that? Uh, Oasis. No. Oh, no, it's not Oasis. <laughs> it's something. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and, and so that was the, vi- and so I got real comfortable Jarrett real fast. Cause it's just him driving me around for literally until it turned dark and I, I like hardly knew him. And then, and then I was like, Hey, when you're done with this project, I actually have a video idea to do recreationally. And then he just went along with it. And then, and then it just kind of, kind of naturally built into other videos. Nice. And then you were like, Hey, yeah. So, well <laughs> then I got to this point where. I was like, you know what I miss? I miss making videos. Mm-hmm. I miss doing like the comedy bits. I do miss doing all that stuff. But see, the only thing is I don't remember I was in film class or not. Because maybe maybe I was, mm-hmm. maybe I wasn't. I don't remember fully. But I do remember that we started I, – I wanted to come back. So I, I, I came – I went up and hang out with you. I'm like, man, I just really want to do a video. Yeah. And I wanted to do a video that wouldn't be on White Boy Vids. Yeah. Because I, I, didn't, I didn't know Jared at the time. And the only time the only time I met him yeah. was when he punched Kurt in the nuts, and I was like, "That is not someone I want to spend my time with." And he did donuts at my concert, so I was like, "Okay, so this guy is the typical just like I just crap. I definitely want to be friends with him. There's no way I'll be friends with him no, after college. Happen. There's no way." And then, um, and I thought he would just be like a complete like jerk or whatever. But then we did that video, mm-hmm. and you were like, "Hey, at the end, we should have like." You join was us. It, was that bees? No. No, mosquitoes. We Yeah, we did that on our own. And then Jarrett was at the end. He came by for a half a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then you're like, yeah, we should join. And in my head, I was like, oh, this is going to be so terrible. Like, <laughs> I just don't want to work with him. It's just going to be a nightmare. I just, I was like, this guy, because, like, he's going to punch me in the nuts if he doesn't want to do a certain <laughs> shot. Or he's going to go do donuts out in the parking lot. Like, that's all I knew he yeah. could do. I was like, oh, that's going to be terrible. And then, um, but then after, literally after that taping, yeah, where he was there for 15 minutes, he was like, "Did you play Xbox?" I was like, "I'm like not so much anymore." He's like, "Oh, yeah, me, we'll play Xbox." Okay. And then 
next thing I know, I found out he was like in like NHS and had like a great GPA and like he doesn't punch people in the nuts all that all the time. That's not his like he's pigeonholed. He's like the guy who punches people in the nuts. Yeah, that wasn't like his his job. That was just like a part time <laughs> thing he was doing. He's just you know he's got to pay the bills somehow. Yeah, I mean you know get a little extra cash. Yeah. You know Christmas is around the corner and the Christmas bonuses are not coming in. Black Friday, the deals are only so good. But yeah, then we started doing. Then we did bees, mm-hmm. and that's when I we started to all kind of hang out, and mm-hmm. that's when it was, it was fun and, and all that craziness. And then, um, then that was probably only a couple months, and then it was senior year when we all did theater. Well, Jared did, yeah, at the so, same so, time. Yeah, so, so now we're doing on a tangent, mm-hmm. and um, you know, on a tangent was it was me, you, and Kurt. Mm-hmm. More emphasis on me and you, <laughs> <laughs> and you. I remember it was like, you guys, you would come up with a lot of the ideas. I think it was. Yeah, it was, it was in the, I remember in the beginning, I had a lot of ideas and a lot of them ended up being good. And then towards the end of the semester, I don't know what happened, but I couldn't think of any ideas. I think that's how it happened. Because I remember I had a lot um, for like the, uh, the Bess blocking everything, the Aladdin thing. I think, I don't know. Okay, so this is what I remember yeah. for at least the Aladdin one, which was the driving one, was you and I went, we would go to Subway, mm-hmm. and we would eat and hang out, and we would d- discuss ideas. I do remember that. That was like the first half of the year we would yeah. do that. And usually, like, we would we would just start talking, it start would go talking. Back and forth. One thing led to another, you would come up with, like, the punchline, which was the Aladdin. Yeah. And we were like, okay, we got to do that. Yeah. So we would do it. And I remember we always had, like, you would do the acting stuff, and we would have, we had to have Kurt in it. Mm-hmm. And he was hard to get to. So we would usually do like right after school or during school, mm-hmm. we would just do the intro with him in it. And mm-hmm. then we would go off and you and I would do the video. And then I would be like, okay, I would start creating all the shots. I would edit. Then you would come join me. You bring Bushami's mm-hmm. pizza. Oh, man, that was great. God, that was good. It was good times. And then, yeah, then I think you're like, the then like the second half of the year, then we were going to B-dubs all the time mm-hmm. and coming up with ideas. Yeah, it was B-dubs. It's all about the food you eat. It's where it the is. ideas come from. It's, it is. What, whatever type of food you get. And um, then we did that stuff. And, you know, then after on a tangent, we were doing a little bit of white boy vids, but then we went we went off to college. Mm-hmm. You're in Oakland stuff. So I guess, so you were in this idea of like, I want to be an actor. Yeah. And then now you're doing your thing. Yeah. So I guess, you know, where how did you get to slowly changing your dream? <laughs> just abandoning my dream. Just abandoning this love and passion. So I mean like, you know, where where was it starting to go with you? Cuz I mean, I even considered like I want to do like, you know, like acting and comedian mm-hmm. stuff and then I started to go more towards being a director. Mm-hmm. Then I started, you know, going more towards where I am now, which yeah. is in advertising. So I figured it would be, um, as things kind of progressed, um, as like as I'm in college more, and I, I guess I figured it was always, if I can have a job um, that can support me, then if I wanted to in my free time, then I could either make videos or whatever, um, mm-hmm. provided everything else is supported. Like, I'm not going to wait tables that was never i was never yeah. that serious about it we were like oh, i gotta go out there i'm gonna make it it was just like i was interested in it and if i can do it in my free time and we found a means to do it i can feel happy like i don't really care too much about being famous if i can have an outlet for telling jokes yeah um then i'm happy and i, I think that's how it kind of to where i figured no matter what i can always come back to it um provided um i have someone to do it with yeah whatever that ends up being um, but for the time being, focus on this other area. Because you were going to be a history teacher. And then I took one history class. It was European history from 1400 to 1739. I don't know what so it was. So then you didn't even get to the part where you find out that England loses and we get America. I don't even know how the Constitution ends. Don't spoil it for me. I'm still reading it. <laughs> and I hated it. Not only did I hate it, I was bad at it. Well, that wasn't really good. Just in general, yeah. it wasn't good. And I go, well, I guess if I can't take the first history class that they offer, even though it was probably a bad choice, I probably could take a history for one. History one. Yeah. And then no, I'll take the, the sequel. The intro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I took that one bad choice. It put a bad taste in my mouth. I go, okay, if I can't get this, 
first try, then maybe being a history teacher isn't a good idea because mm-hmm. I don't get it. Because um, I wanted to be a teacher because I like talking to people, and I think that all kind of overlaps. Um, yeah. Being in front of the people, center of attention, talking to people. I like yeah. that. So that was like, yeah, I'll be a teacher. But I don't know enough about anything, one thing, to be a teacher. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, and then I just looked at what else I was interested in, um, health and and fitness and stuff like that. And so then that kind of steered me that direction, not really knowing what I could do with it yet. Sweet. So then you got to, so now we're, we're kind of at this point now where we're trying to to do um, podcasts and, you know, trying to get that together mm-hmm. because it is you know, we can we can literally just have a recorder just like this and, yeah. and get the conversation going. So, I mean, I guess my thing is, um, you know, you never you never tried stand up. No. But I think you should. Yeah, I'd love to. And um, you, but yeah, and I mean, because I because we ended up doing it with with Jared and I ended up doing it because we had an outlet, mm-hmm. which. It took a lot for me to convince Jarrett to do it. Really? Yeah. And in my opinion, his best stand-up that he did was he had to do a show and he was running late. And so we said, oh, he'll come. And he goes, I don't have any written material. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to sit down. I'm like, Jarrett, just come here and just talk about your day. Yeah. He literally sat down in a chair, talked about his day, and it was the best stand-up. Really? That he did, yeah. He sat in a chair on stage? And- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, he just sat up there and he's like, yeah. He's like, so this morning, and he just went on. And just, you know, do his little banter, and he was great. He didn't have a closing. Like, no. his closing was just like, and yeah, that's that's it. I'm done. And he was all like, I'm sad. But after that, like, that was that was some of his best stand-up. But yeah. it's like, how do you how do you write that? How do you, you know, How do you start, make that consistent? Yeah. How, yeah, how do you make it consistent? So he started, you know, started to write jokes and started to mm-hmm. do stuff. And he got second place in that, yeah. that competition, which mm-hmm. was really good. Um, the first year I got to finals, and then the second year I didn't make it to finals. Mm-hmm. But he got he did get to second place, and it was it was good, you know. He had some good stuff. But um, I'm hoping to interview him next, yeah, and talk about you know some of his process with stand up comedy and all that stuff. But I mean, I guess for you, um, I wanted also to talk about just comedy and just kind of I don't know, just you know, talk about yeah, just kind of anything because. Um, yeah, so, so I guess really, what is what, currently today? Yeah. What is the type of comedy that that you've been, you've been interested in? What is some stuff? I all I watch is stand up as far as like media, mm-hmm. like, um, I don't know. I used to be really interested in in other YouTubers sketches. And then I'm not at all anymore. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's some funny stuff that like you'll send me, but I'm just um, more so focused on focused, <laughs> unfocused on when I watch TV is stand up. I lot I like a lot of Brian Reagan, uh, Bill Burr, Louis C.K. I like really um, like bitter, like even even with Brian Reagan, even though he's a clean comic, you can watch him and you can tell like when he's telling a joke, like. He wasn't like smiling and laughing when that happened in real life. Yeah. Like you can, he'll say it and you go, that guy is, is, is as pissed off as I am when I'm in the same situation. And it's funny. And that's what I like is it's, it's kind of dark. Well, it's usually pretty, especially with like Louis CK. Yeah. Um, but it's so funny just to watch. It's, I think it's like a man just like witnessing the, the world is, I guess how it might be referred to as. Mm-hmm. And I really like that as opposed to like, I really don't like niches. Or gimmicks or um, um, impression comics only go so far, yeah. And then and then it's over. Frank Caliendo. Yeah, <laughs> you can only do so many Scooby Doo uh, impressions. Well, Dimitri Martin came out with a new stand up on Netflix. I think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the thing too. Is like I I never when it came to. Um, like doing stand up or any type of comedy. I remember Dimitri Martin, I thought he was just amazing, mm-hmm. but I never actually saw myself as, or even like Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. Type of stuff. Like I never saw myself as like, okay, if I did stand up comedy, I would just go up there and just say just a bunch of like little one liners. I could, no, I would never be able to do that. No. Yeah. 
I mean, and it gives me so that I can respect to that. But at the same time, I go, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I mean, like my, one of my big comedians out there is even like Jim Gaffigan. Mm-hmm. Like he, he observes stuff, yeah. but he turns it into like, there's a whole like segment dedicated to yes. something. So like, if he wants to talk about like bacon, it's a whole segment about bacon. So it's more memorable versus like, yeah. today I went to the grocery store you know, our B is this, and just keep like going to so many different things that you don't even remember what no. the last joke was. No. You're just kind of waiting for that next joke. Yeah, and I really like that to where someone like Jim Gaffigan or um, S- Jim Gaffigan specifically, he could take something like bacon, and it's not just how good bacon tastes. It goes to the people who like bacon. What do they do? The yeah. people who don't like bacon, what do they do? And then it goes to the cooking the bacon, and it might go back to the pig who was made into the bacon. And it could be 40 minutes, Jim Gaffigan, just talking about bacon. You realize, I'm watching a grown man on stage <laughs> talking about bacon for 40 minutes, and I'm loving it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's something that's that I think is like really cool in mm-hmm. terms of when you're observing stuff is he's looking at every single angle yeah. of that. And that, I think, would be something cool. In terms of when you you know write a comedy, just like think of one thing and just think of how many jokes can you drain out of that. Yeah, milking one it until thing. Yeah, uh, one thing that um, I had kind of a a problem with was I like so many comedians that when I try to do stand up, sometimes it was like I'd go up there and I'd be like kind of like a Jim Gaffigan type mm-hmm. copy. Another time I go up there and I'm like a Tosh, like a Daniel Tosh yeah. copy or like a Louis C.K. like it's 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 hard to find what makes you funny. Yeah. And I'm tying that back to you because like with white boy vids, I feel like we were really starting to get a certain type of humor. We had our we had a we had a beat. Yeah. As far as it was it was it was pretty methodical as far as the formula for making something funny. We just for for our sake, making something funny to us, we just had to find what the topic would be. And sometimes when we'd go to film a video about blank topic, it w- it wouldn't even end up being about that at all. Yes. Because we'd find out, no, nah, we can't really go. And w- while trying to, we're going to make a video about something, something, something. We're, we're I don't, mur- murdering something in a trunk. I don't yeah. know. And then it turned into a video of, oh, you're talking about, about mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. So mosquitoes was... <laughs> There was something to do with a bear yeah. or something, and when there was like, oh, I remember. There was a bear. It was supposed to be like a, a bear in the woods, mm-hmm. and it was a little stuffed animal bear, and we freak out, you know, because back then, like, the YouTube comedy was like, it was that type of, yeah. it was kind of like, like a smosh, like that type of comedy where it's like they look at something kind of ridiculous, like, oh, it's a little cute doll, and everybody freaks out. And, yeah. So, so we do that. We put it in the trunk, and we we're gonna stab it and have blood shoot out. And that was our big joke. That was the big <laughs> joke. Was the that was the big joke that literally we didn't use until no. Wednesdays. Yeah. We finally did it Wednesdays, and it's so quick. But we did that, and then what happened was we set up the camera. Mm-hmm. We went out there, and we just started getting attacked by mosquitoes. And that immediately became the subject. Yeah. But I think a lot of I think the best example of our writing has to do with um the well two of them one is vince's glove Mm -hmm. we were i remember that day we were going man what should we i do and i just i just started like bsing like oh we just got to find something yes and make fun of it and there was a literally a glove on the ground a loose glove a loose glove on the ground and we just said okay let's do a video on that and then it turned into okay so we found the glove what happens and then it always Mm -hmm. turns into murder stealing fire i think that is so perfect as far as to sum it up because at that point we kind of realized it and we're like okay it was basically like let's test it yeah let's test if this is actually what we do and it is essentially oh man somebody's glove and then what is the whole it leads to a whole backstory about an old man works at a library and he got held up because the glove makes you commit crime and that's (laughs) well because the thing i say is can you imagine the good i can do by simply wearing this glove and it turns into just this we're robbing what's, a bookstore. What's great about that is is we opened it up because it's supposed to be a comedy and because it's you with a glove saying, imagine what I can do with this. It doesn't matter what the item was anymore. It Now, anything we say after that point is safe and it'll make sense because we basically 
it, we, we, you know what I mean? It's, you're, you're, it, we're using our imagination. Yeah. And really, that's what made, I think, on a tangent, mm-hmm. work. Yeah. I mean, we were able to come up with new material all the time because it was just like, well, imagine this. And yeah. then you can literally fill in a blank because the audience already knows, okay, they're using their imagination. So it doesn't have the to. The world doesn't have to have rules anymore. Yeah. It's literally just imagination. And all of our imagination always led up to murder or manslaughter or yeah. whatever. It was always, it always, we always want to end it dark. Yeah. And um, just to give the audience closure, you know, someone's got to die. Make them feel Good. feel warm and, <laughs> and inside. Yeah. yeah, and that's you know what I, I was thinking about that too. I really don't watch YouTube skits no. anymore. YouTube skits are kind of they're kind of dead. There's not really no. You know, and I don't think it's because I'm older. I think it's just because it's either. The skit is so high production value that it's... You know it's not some kids in a basement with it, and so yeah. it kind of loses some of it. It loses its relatability. Yeah. And it, it's that or the... I don't really I don't really know even other skits anymore. No. It seems like... I mean, when, when we were in... I remember, like, I was like, if I can be on YouTube, that'd be so great. Like, yeah. You know, and do videos and all that type of stuff. And then I ended up... We ended up doing some videos, and then we started creating videos... But back then they, they had balloon, balloon shop. shop. They had Smosh was the big. They yeah. were the big ones. But balloon shop was was my there was favorite. Like Bride to Nick. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of them. Yeah. And it was more. It was usually two to three guys. And mm-hmm. end of concept. End of backstory. Yeah. Two yeah. to three guys, and then they just did stuff. Yeah. I mean, there is. Yeah, I just I, I'm trying to think of like cause you said I sent you some videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's really not and, too much anymore. And then there's so much. Even the people who were who were good YouTubers made consistent com- content. They're more so not really anything against them. They're more so concerned with keeping their brand alive, so they feed into what the public wants, which is getting quicker and quicker videos. Um, Vine and Instagram and yeah. people don't people don't want to even I remember when we were making videos it was a new concept to me where you were like okay this video can't be more than like two minutes and twenty seconds or three minutes or whatever yeah. it was because if it's longer than that I'm not watching it and that's it's so true. true and then it, it's just gotten shorter since then I even tell that at my my work all the time I say because they because a lot of times when they spend a lot of money on a video they think they're paying by the minute yeah like they're buying time kind of similar to you know. If, if you're doing an advertisement, oh, we want to get 30 seconds. Or, so when they see a video, they're like, yeah, I would think about, you know, five to ten minutes. I go, if somebody sees five minutes on there, mm-hmm. they're not going to watch it. No. I go, look at Netflix. It takes forever to commit to watch an hour and a half movie, mm-hmm. but we'll literally watch a whole season of a TV show. Because it says 30 20, minutes. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes. minutes. So you start watching it, and then you're like, well, I'll just keep watching it. Yeah. And it just keeps digesting. We... We have the the attention capacity of like goldfish, yeah. And we want that quick thing. the The golden time is actually a minute and a half. Really, I, I end up finding that out throughout work. If you can do, if you can get whatever needs to be done in a minute and a half, mm-hmm. people will watch it and they yeah. won't feel like they're taking forever. But I think it's going to be even worse because you brought up a great point yeah. with Vine. Yeah, that's where everybody is now. It's those six second. Yeah, and those are super. I mean, there's a couple. There's like I want to say one per less than a percent. Is like the higher end stuff. Most of it is literally like a dude puts a a basketball hoop on his head and pretends he's his mom, and then he's like, "What you doing?" And then it shows him going like, "Mom, I hate you," and that's it. That's the like, whole video, and be, and that's funny. Well, I, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, there's, and that's it's it's a totally different change. Whereas so for us, we were like watching like these stories, and majority of the stories were like three guys in a basement yeah. and they're, you know, they put on costumes and like they get shot and like all this type yeah. of stuff. Now it's just like, don't you hate it when your mom yells at you? And it's like six seconds. It's know? literally moving memes. It's like when your girl acts like this and then it's him with a mop on his head or a basketball net. Yeah. And then he imitates his girlfriend for half a second. And then it shows him with the face of him rolling his eyes, but not moving. And then he's like, I'm fine famous. And that's the end of the whole video. Yeah. It's just some, and that's the thing. Like, I bet, like, if you're Vine famous, you have to you have to come out with content like every two seconds oh, yeah. because you literally just scroll through mm-hmm. and look all this stuff. It's not like the oh wait it's buffering. Yeah, give it a second. Like you had a really there's so you little wanted to see Balloon Shop's video and so you're just waiting there for it. 
or do you try to switch it to HD? <laughs> I've never seen a YouTube video in HD to this day. Okay, I have, but there's in 1080. A, I would sacrifice and watch it in 240p. Yeah. <laughs> That was, it was, but yeah, I think that's something that's big is, um, you know, comedy, comedy is changing in that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's becoming such a micro thing. And if we all got, let's say like me, you and Jared, we got together and we did a vine. Mm-hmm. One, we have two people too many. It's usually just like, you only need like one guy now. Yeah. And it's just his iPhone. Yeah. You might need two for the other guy to hold your iPhone. You might need to hire a cameraman. Yeah. And there's no like. <laughs> There's there's really no like shots. There's no feeling of like oh this is like a big deal. No, you don't know the character really. You usually know their moms. Mom, I'm grounded. And then the mom's in the background, doesn't know she's getting filmed, and she goes, "Ah, your father and I are getting a divorce." And then the video ends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think that's. I don't. I don't know what that's gonna do. I mean, I honestly don't know if I could be like I. I believe. Get, if we sacrificed a bunch, we could have, I don't know how big YouTube is now, we could or could have been YouTube famous. I don't know if I could be Vine famous. I, yeah. don't, I don't think that's like... My I think it's an oxymoron because yeah. I don't think you can, even if you got famous, <laughs> well, even if you got famous, it's not like it's going to be like, oh, like, you know, yeah. people are going to know you after they watch it. They're going to be like, oh, that's funny. And yeah. they're literally going to scroll to the next Vine famous person. Yeah. And if everyone's Vine famous, then no one no is. One is I think they said that in The Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone's super, no, no one is. It's a good movie. Let's talk about The Incredibles for the next 10 minutes. Well, they're, they're making The are Incredibles 2. Are they making too. The Incredibles 2? They are. Really? I'm dead serious. They're making The Incredibles 2. It's um, eventually. But now, they, are the kids going to be grown up, or is it going to be as if The Incredibles came out last week, and they're like, it's The Incredibles 2, everyone's still a baby? I think what's going to happen is the the baby's going to go to college, and they're going to have a really <laughs> sad scene at the end. I've been breaking up with his girlfriend. And when the dad leaves, he's going to say, see you later, partner, and he's going to like throw a car because he's got super straight. <laughs> But I don't know, though. I just That's just the formula that... Was picked, that leaked? <laughs> I think that was leaked, yeah. Yeah. In, in bad quality in a movie theater. I think it's going to end with a cameo by John Cena. John Cena! I almost did that. I was like, hey guys, it's the podcast we that did. And I was going to have it just like, yeah, here we're going to introduce and just have the John Cena. John Cena! And just put that on repeat for an hour and a half. Just see how long it Because I was in my car. I probably would have listened to it for the whole hour and a half when you sent it. I was like, all right, let's see how this is. I plugged it in my phone and I was driving home from class. And I was listening to it. <laughs> there, right? But, yeah, I mean, now, I guess I guess the big question is, do we do we think that, um, like, like, could we even, like, what if, what if, like, could we even make a white boy video more? Like, do you think that would be even a thing? Because we end up turning the white boy vid channel into just us saying happy birthday Into to our other. recycle bin. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like our our garbage thing. Yeah, I mean we made Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesdays was a lot did of fun. Did I go on White Boy Vids or did that go on uh, Stu Got? I think it went on Stu Got because yeah. Jared wasn't involved. I honestly don't know. Is it? It's either the last couple videos we made, whether it was actually a skit or if if it was a birthday video or a tribute or whatever it was, whether it was that or that, it didn't get a lot of views, and obviously all of our most of our subscribers have deleted their YouTube accounts because they have new laptops and they forgot the password. Yeah. Or is well, it because... they kids and they're retiring soon. Exactly. They're, they're at the end of their life. They just finished their game of Roy 2. Just came out. <laughs> um, or is it because it's either because YouTube is dead or it's because consistent content is the key. Like making... I don't think YouTube is dead, but is it dead for skits? I th- I would say yes to every single one of those things. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, one, we had a ton of subscribers, but how many of those were actually people who are visiting and constantly using mm-hmm. the content? Two, um, I, th- I I think that, you know, content is king, and the more content you have and the more relevant you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about this. Think of all of, like, the balloon shop guys, you know, all those guys where we were just, like, they stopped posting stuff, and you just kind of stopped – that was caring a, that was like, the whole reason. you were going back to view their old videos no. you already saw them you're like okay i'm waiting for it and it didn't happen 
and um, and then I also think too with that in mind, the skits are dead, and I think it. I think Vine now has something to do with that mm-hmm. because now you can just do a skit right now in a mid second, no real high production value. The idea really doesn't even have to be that good as no. long as it's relatable. Yeah, you know something like, oh, I hate when my mom does this. Yeah, or don't you hate when your bae does this. And it turns into that big thing. It's memes and pranks. It's that's what the internet is right now. I mean, there was there was always pranks on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, I remember there was um, fire in the hole where kids would you would drive up by a drive-in. Yeah. And when they'd open it up, you throw like tobacco, you throw like sauce, or you throw something at yeah. them in the driveway. Like, I mean, there were still assholes around that. Assholes time. Assholes always existed. Yeah, they, they're always there. Yeah. But I feel like now there's not even really creative no. like assholes, and it's. And, and, and the content is even huge, like I said, with Vine because you're just scrolling through. You're so mm-hmm. you can just see seconds upon seconds upon seconds. Yes, you know. And we're getting more and more just like, okay, we want it now, we want it now, and now. And I fall short to that all the time. Yeah. I mean, if a stand comedian doesn't do anything new within a year, I assume he like died. I or, really assume that he figured out that. I don't know a joke set up. He died. There. Yeah. He just, you know, he just kind of gave up and. Um, and I think that that's and that's and the ridiculous part about it is, we take for granted all of the writing, all the stuff they have to actually do. Mm-hmm. Because if they started creating a ton of content but it wasn't good, yeah, eventually you would go, eh, he's not really that good anymore. Then he'd get insulted for the content he does make. Well, you wanted more content, yeah, yeah, but I I, I want it all to be funny all of the time. Okay, well it's not gonna happen. And then we get into this paradigm where we go, we get super nostalgic. And we go, oh man, I wish it was like his humor in the nineties. Yeah. And no, this don't. I'm applying this to stand up I'm applying this to movies, everything. Yeah. And now we're at a generation where it's like everything from the nineties yes. is coming back. Yeah. Which yeah. which is Yeah, it's it's what you said. I want he should do his old stuff. I want him to do all of his old stuff. No, you don't. You then don't. he's then he's doing his old stuff, and then you'd be like, he doesn't have any new material. You're not happy. No, we're not happy. No one's ever happy. And it kind of it's kind of they're beating everything with a stick with the nostalgia. I'm not going to lie. I'd love to watch 90s stuff here and there. 90s Nick. Yeah. Things like that. But everything on my news feed on Facebook, everything on on the television, whatever it is, is only 90s kids remember. Macho Man Randy Savage stretching a Stretch Armstrong and you go, <sighs> oh my God, that's what life should be right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, that's something we can even talk about is... In the beginning, when I was hearing all this like '90s like nostalgic moment, yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is great!" Yeah, because it was right around the time when we were like leaving high school. They started mm-hmm. to get really like nostalgic stuff that was like kicking, right around 2010. Yeah, it was starting to kick in because it was it was 20 years since the '90s. Yeah, and we were like, "Man, that was such a great time!" I didn't have to worry about what major I did. I didn't have to take no, you know, all that crap. Like it was it was great. But now it's so just abused with like, oh, remember all this '90s stuff, mm-hmm. and it's and it's and it does, and I fall for it every time because I go, oh, that's really cool, and then I realize if that came back, I'm not gonna like it. No. Like I'm never ever gonna watch Girl Meets World. No. I'm just not. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm probably not gonna watch Fuller House. Yeah. I'm not gonna, <laughs> if that's still going on. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, you know, what I was really disappointed in was over the summer, I don't know if you saw it or maybe we talked about it. I was really disappointed in Jurassic World. Really? I I my favorite my favorite movie that summer was Inside Out. Mhm. But the only part that I was starting to like with Jurassic World, which maybe contradicts what I'm talking about, is they started to bring back the 90s stuff. Mhm. With like the old stuff like okay, now it's getting kind of cool. Like the show it got better. Yeah. But at the same time I was like but you know what's always better? The original. Yeah. The original is always better. So right. they, they try to – everyone's – it's just this rehash of – There's way too much of that of – because it is it is a it – is a it's backwards to where you want the nostalgia because no one will tell you that they don't like a good nostalgic moment. Jimmy yeah. Fallon having a Good Burger sketch on there. Yes. Of course you're going to be like, holy crap, I'm not changing the channel. i got to see – Kel, who hasn't done anything since the rap video he made in 98, and and Keenan, who is on Saturday Night Live for the last 13 seasons. I've got to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's backwards to say that that you don't like nostalgia, because you do, but at the same time, you don't like what gets put out when they make sequels, because it's not good. Yeah. And, and that's everything. It's either another Terminator, it's another Jurassic World, it's another... And you notice every time they make a, a sequel... 
10 years after the original, or, you know, it's been long enough and they're mm -hmm. making a new Rocky, is it's never called Rocky 8. It's called Rocky. Yeah. The movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's called, or whatever, which, which, which I feel like the only answer is you just got to come, come up with new content. You have to think of a new idea because it's never, mm -hmm. you're going to get pigeonholed and, and people are going to say, well, it's not as good as the original. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because the original got done. The original, the original is what makes you want to follow the story more. Yeah. It's what makes you want to keep, keep going through. So like, yeah, the original is the best because that was your starting point, yeah. but you have to enjoy it for what it is. Speaking of, speaking of Rocky, I do kind of want to see that, that movie where he's training. Yeah. The kid. Doesn't that look good? It does it's look good. It's going to be a letdown based on what we're talking about. Yeah. And a big part of the reason why it's going to be a letdown too is because the trailer already revealed everything about the movie that I need to see. Yes. Like, oh, Rocky's there. He's going to train the guy mm -hmm. that he fought with. He's going to win. Or even if he loses, it's like, it doesn't matter. Because every other Rocky, he wins or he loses. Yeah. It's like, okay. But I mean, I mean, how do you even feel about the, the new Star Wars movies coming out? I am... It's it's not gonna be good, but I'm going to see it. Oh, I'm gonna see it. It's I can't not see it. I think I think the only difference with that is it's it's gonna be like this. It has to be. It just has to be better than one, two, and three. That's it. If it's better than that, then everybody yeah. will say it's like a monumental achievement. Yeah. If it's not, if it's worse, oh, I can't oh, even imagine. God. Be, but I feel like it's gonna yeah. be very very like rehashed. I yeah. feel like they're gonna be like, hey. Remember Luke? Remember him? Han Solo? Because, and it is, and I forgot about that, but I was going to say if if they could, before I remember that, they're going to have yeah. Harrison Ford in a walker <laughs> on, in, in space. If they were to make it, because Star Wars is so vast of a concept that yeah. it doesn't have to continue the story, which is the, the, good, the great thing about it, is mm -hmm. it doesn't have to continue the story. It could be a different part in a different galaxy also far, far away. That's true. And they could make another six movies, and they'd probably all be good, provided they have the right directors and writers and things like that. But if they try to make this Star Wars 7, it's not going to be good. Or there's a good chance it won't be good. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing, I mean, I guess really that's it's kind of a harder question because with Star Wars, there's books, comic books. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's movies, TV shows. There's stuff that expands even beyond yeah. that story. I mean... There's a whole book I saw in the bookstore once. It was dedicated to like when Obi Wan was on Tatooine, and mm -hmm. he was just there, just getting old. There's like a whole world of yeah. things that he did there, yeah. and at the same time, there's ones of like a bounty hunter that you'll never see in any movies ever. Mm -hmm. But he's just part of the Star Wars story, and as long as they stick to like the certain rules, yeah, people can still enjoy it. Exactly, and I guess, which is which is kind of different, but at the same time, it just hopes that it doesn't become like a rehash. That yes, it's. Not, it's but we want it to. That's we, the that's the messed we up. We want to rehash to live it. But what we actually what we we don't know what we need. What we need is to be a new galaxy, a new backstory. If yes. Better Call Saul. We need it. Yes. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Better Call Saul. I watched it because of Breaking Bad. Yes. So like, you want that nostalgic feel, but at the same time, the thing that made that nostalgic thing so great was that it created something new. Yes. And that's what everybody, I think, forgets is, like, it's to create something new. Mm -hmm. But – and then I also wonder, too, you know, a lot of the nostalgic stuff. Like, like okay, if you were grown – if you if if the, the, the 90s Nickelodeon shows mm -hmm. started today. Like they right? never got shown. They never got shown. Mm -hmm. You as a kid, you watched, let's say let, – let's say, you know, you, you were your parents. Yeah. And – you didn't grow up with Rugrats mm -hmm. and Keenan Kill and all that, and then you saw kids watching it. Would you think, oh, this is some quality cartoons? No. no it's awful. Have you ever – I tried to watch all that, the old all that. It's bad. Yeah. It's not good at all, and I can't get enough. I know. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like it's only – we create that, that nostalgia that because good. when we watched it, we thought it was great. Yeah. Like there are going to be kids now – Mm -hmm. That are gonna watch, you know, cartoons today that we'll look at and go, why would anybody watch this? Yes, and think it's and think it's this amazing exactly thing. And I and the, that's the big thing right now is like, you know, our age. I think our age is coming to a point where we're still broke, but we're also starting to buy stuff at yeah. the same time. So they're trying to throw like all this crazy '90s nostalgia because mm -hmm. that's a huge market. Yeah, because that's because that's a growing market. Now. Yeah, 
and you know we're starting to come into the workforce we're starting mm-hmm. to buy stuff so it's like hey remember uh remember dunkaroos <laughs> yeah we made a movie on dunkaroos and people are gonna go Tommy see pickles it. meets dunkaroos and it's four hours long yeah and we'll go see it we'll go spend our money but then we'll it's you just come i i, I never did this before you know i want it on the record i feel like it's equivalent to getting a prostitute like 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 you're getting you're trying to get your fix but at the same time you're like i paid money yeah it doesn't feel good. It's not good. No. It's not. The, there's a reason nostalgia is a word. It's not a word because that means old stuff. It's it's stuff that I used to remember, and the fact of remembering it makes you feel good because when it happened in that time, you were literally carefree. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, my life sucks right now, <laughs> but it does it when I watch the Rugrats. Yes. And that's the whole thing. And I think definitely at the Rugrats age, we're at an age of carefree. But I feel like there's a lot of stuff now mm-hmm. that, um, you know, we turn into nostalgia. Like, oh, like, like for example, um, like high school. You mm-hmm. know, not to, oh, we were so carefree. When we were in high school, we weren't just smiling all the time. No, we were pissed off. All of the time. I've never angry. been more mad. Yeah, we were angry at people. Like, we had, you had your problems. Yeah. And that's the thing that's interesting is, like, with, with the nostalgia is – it it isn't a hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that life was simpler back then. It's that since you overcame that part, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem as bad. Whereas the the frontier ahead, there's you don't know what's going to happen, so that's scary. Whereas yeah. you already know what happened. You graduate high school. Oh, that was so bad. that was so easy compared yeah. to now. Was it though? At the time, it really wasn't. That was your whole world. That was your whole world. You were like, wow, it was so much easier when I was in kindergarten and I just ate crayons. And then when you're in kindergarten, you're like, wow, it was so great when I didn't have to go to this scary place and eat crayons. I could eat crayons at the comfort of my own home. And then when you were like there, the three, you're like, wow, life was so much easier when I was in the womb, not giving a crap, not feeding myself. Now I got to eat. It was a tube. It came right to me. I could just spoiled. You're a sperm. Like, wow, this is great. Wow, I was the fastest sperm. Back then I had medals. See? I was somebody. But oh. so I okay so you know let's just keep let's just keep talking let's keep working about stuff mm-hmm. so we got we got nostalgia nostalgia covered so um I guess is there I mean you said you're watching a lot of stand up yeah watch a lot of stuff girlfriend gets annoyed at me the girlfriend gets annoyed at you how how is the girlfriend how is great how is she everything's doing? great she's busy we're all both busy it's an awkward time in our life it we're is just really busy people and we see each other once a week and now she's she's in her program she's mm-hmm. doing her thing she starts Monday. So this Monday. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So she's stressed out. So how's grad school? It's, uh, it is, I don't want to say hard. It's just like I'm, I work, uh, not full time, like 35 hours a week, basically f- full time. And then I'll, I have like three 14 hour days a week because I go right from work to there and I get out at eight and then I drive from home to Detroit. I get home at nine and it's, it's exhausting but it's fine. I get home. I go to bed. I'm kind of in the movement now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's okay. It's nothing to where I'm like, this homework's too hard. It's just I'm finding my balance. I've never worked full time and gone to school before. So it's more that than anything. You should see the people in my program. It's It makes me feel like a pile of shit. <laughs> it is. They are so gathered and they're already done with their lives i don't know why they're here there's me and like five other people who are like me who they just finished their bachelor's they're on to their master's okay so these people are they've worked they're, they're they're a lot older they got their experience but now they're just getting a master's to probably either up their pay or get their opportunities i don't even know i'm not kidding when i say most people in my program are already physicians okay what am i doing here yeah they're, they're every other person is a we had a we had a type of in a, in a grad school type of write a little thing about yourself your background blah blah and then she read them out loud first day still in grad school we're still doing that you're still doing the icebreakers 18 years straight i don't know how long i've been in school and i'm there are a couple of physicians there are a, most people who are phd students and they're getting this on the side there's a girl who's saying i got into dental school i'm gonna do this while i wait there is a guy who I talked to yesterday. He works for the House of Representatives in Lansing. Also a professional musician who plays in symphonies. He could. He said he could do that by himself. It's the elbow. Relax. Yeah. He said he could do that by by just that, and he'd financially be fine. He plays in symphonies, 
put, puts down beats for records, things yeah. like that. So he's that professional musician, and now he's just getting that because he wants to do something else. Yeah. What, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, I'm Richie. Uh, you probably see my white boy vids. I uh, I like to I like to go to the gym. Big fan of Chipotle. I, uh, I just finished, I don't really play Xbox too much no more, but I sure would like to. Uh, I almost work full time. Am not a physician. And that was my answer. And I don't play the elbow. I just play with my elbow. <laughs> Jeez. So I got a question. Yeah. Um, and I was going to ask you this with or without podcast. So when you, uh, when you first, when you're starting, you, cause you're starting grad school, mm-hmm. is it like freshman year? of college or is it like you know like sophomore junior or senior year where like freshman year of college are like you think you can beat the system this ain't a game you're all gonna fail the average person like the high the smartest kid in the class is getting a c minus and you're gonna be grateful for that c minus and it just scares the crap everybody or is it more just like if that's you know what you know what you got to do it's grad school like you know what i'm saying like how does the scale okay if that's the scale definitely not freshman (laughs) um it is it it's it it's a freshman in the fact where it feels very this first semester feels very gen ed esque. Okay. Um, it is kind of laying the ground floor, and I've already heard a couple people say the first semester is super boring. Get past it. But it is feels like it's your senior senior year in the fact of you know what you're doing. Do yeah. what you got to do. Here are the rules. I'm not gonna go over them. If you're copyright, you get kicked out. Boom. Yeah. And and so it's 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 a little bit of both. I hate gen ed so mentally i'm struggling to care even though it's in my program it's so focused it's as focused as you could get biostatistics yeah. epidemiology it's 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 the statistics and the trends of disease for big populations wow Richie, that's what you're going into it's so boring and it's so general so it, yeah i have a hard it's time general but it's not it. like you got to take an english right assi- i'm okay. not taking shakespeare yeah and there's there's the there's the guy over there and he's 40 you don't know why he's there and why he's taking shakespeare but he's there and he always asks a question and it's like you already read shakespeare and you were there why do you <laughs> why do you have all these questions i think you're him you're you're on his staff that's good yeah because i was i was curious about that because i just remember you know, and they, you probably did it the same at, at Oakland. There were, so, there were certain classes that were like, most of you are going to fail. Yeah. Most of you aren't going to make it. I was wondering if it's like that or if it's like, well, you've already paid a ton of money in grad school. Here's what you got to do. Yeah. They're very, um, it seems everyone's very open to help. Obviously, they have the it's grad school, kill yourself if you don't if you don't know this as far as the general background guidelines of being in class and doing your thing. Yes. So it's very... It's not so micromanaging, but at the same time, if you need it, I feel like they're like, we just want you all to go through and make it. Yeah. So that's what it sounds, seems like. That's cool. It's a good mix, I think. It's cool, yeah. Because I've told you before, I've, I've always been interested in grad school. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't want to go to grad school for film. I just oh, yeah. feel like it's, I mean, it, it. some people see it as like a time you can work on your craft and you can create stuff, mm-hmm. but I don't want it, I don't want it to kind of create myself as a film teacher and it's in this business i've learned that the college degree got me into the door yeah. to get some you know to get work but really it's just me going out and just filming and just mm-hmm. you know learning from other people that's that's where i'm going to learn and be better and the better my work is the better my portfolio looks the more opportunities and better pay i can degree. get yeah versus now if they were like hey vince you know we want to put you at this position but you need to get a master's. And if my work was going to cover my master's, then oh, I'd say yeah. I can do it. Yeah. But I think I would do maybe like even like a master's in business mm-hmm. or something because I feel like that it would be more of a man you know managing. Would you consider versus marketing? Versus like working like an on MBA the arts, focus on marketing since that's kind of yeah, a little bit like would something you? like that, okay. like maybe like a marketing. That'd be cool. But um, you know what? It's it's it's. I hear a lot of people um about like grad school where they're like, oh, you people won't hire you because you're you have a master's and that's true for a lot of fields or or it's the your case is perfect you you got that got you in the door and now the only thing that's going to make you look better for the most part is showing how good you are via doing it yes for for health a bachelor's in health says yeah i was interested in health so i got a bachelor's in health doesn't yeah. say anything for specifically for health the master's is the bachelor's it is it is not a 
a like a where a pigeon holds you, it just makes you say, yeah. "Now you can start." Now I can. It's basically now I can start. I got my master's in public health, yeah. and it's focused, and I can I qualify for this. I qualify for this. It's not master's preferred because it is master's preferred. Now I have it. Mm-hmm. It replaces some experience here. It's necessary. Well, the one thing you're definitely doing right, even if your parents were like, "We're millionaires, don't work, just go to school," yeah. is the job. Mm-hmm. Um, working experience for me, it was. I mean, if you if you Google the words film major online, mm-hmm. it comes back LOL. <laughs> you're not gonna get a job. You're never gonna get work. Like you suck. Yeah. And a big factor of that was I I would do film internships, and I started to figure out a little more of what I wanted to do, and I started to push myself near like advertising and all that stuff. And eventually, that experience ended up building to get the job I have now. Yeah. And um, I've heard that too. If you got a master's, you won't get hired. And mm-hmm. sometimes they say that because they see, okay, you went to, you got your bachelor's, and then you got your master's. Mm-hmm. I mean, your master's, but they don't see that you actually work or have actual experience. No, so yeah. they go, oh, he just knows how to read books. This is real life. This is how you really have to do it. And they don't, <laughs> they don't hire you. They'll hire, yeah, whatever. Like, so just getting experience is is huge. Yeah. Because the degree is going to be like, okay, so you have these certain certifications, but it shows like, oh, you're actually doing stuff. Mm-hmm. That's going to help you mm-hmm. a ton. You need yeah. – it's like a can't live with them, can't live without them type yeah. of thing. But that's going to be, from my own experience, a big a big factor. Because like my first, my first job – well, I got the internship because they were like, oh, you're a student. Internship, perfect. Yeah. Then the next job I got, I was it was a student job. And they said, but it was a film job. They go, oh, let's just talk about your internship. They didn't mm-hmm. care what classes I took. They didn't care. What, they yeah. go, oh, senior, you got internship experience. You're hired. Yeah. Then when, then that job was like, hey, they referred me to this other guy. And that's where I started working at Bark Micro Studios mm-hmm. in Grand Rapids. They're like, oh, yeah, because you worked there. They didn't care about, you know, my, my degree. They're like, oh, you graduated. Congrats. Yeah. You can come work for us. The job I got now. The interview process, they were just like, oh, you went to Grand Valley. Your name is Vince. Like, it was literally like the yeah. same. They didn't care. They will tell me about your experience at in Grand Rapids. Yeah. That's what they wanted to know. So your next employee might go, oh, you got a master's? Cool, bachelor's, right? Tell me about your experience at where you're working. Yeah. So that's 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 definitely the best way yeah. to do it. It's going well. Hopefully it keeps going Um where I'm working. When you did the when you did your this is me in the in the interview process and this is a guy sending you away because because you don't have any experience because you just went to college. I just picture a guy just chewing bubble gum, half bald, Kevin Spacey in the interview. Hey, so it says here you got he, he talks Italian he, like he that. He talks Italian like this. You got from the Brooklyn. You got, you got, what is this? What is it? You book? You book reader? What do you want to grow up to be a book? You know words? You know words? What do you think? You better than me? Huh? <laughs> what, you park your car next to my car? You think your car's as good as my car? I tell you, you put $21,000 on the car. I paid cash. Suitcase full of cash. Get out of my office. You know what I do with that cash? I don't read it. I spend it. What, what I got to know how, how to spell Washington? You know how, how to spell Ben Franklin? I, t- I know how to spend it. I know how to read it. I spend it. <laughs> Just got to all read. Does my wife had to leave me? Is that what that's about? <laughs> what do you think? My divorce that. is your, your fault? What do you think? Oh, the lawyer, he can read. <laughs> he can be my, my wife's divorce lawyer. I don't like him. I don't like him. She's cheating on me with him, you know. I seen it. I hired a PI, didn't I? I used that money of mine. You got a PI to do my work for me. He thinks he's so damn smart. Dude, we gotta we gotta we gotta just create a time, man. We gotta create a time where we can just do jokes and do fun <laughs> stuff. Because meanwhile, I want to make that video. Yeah. You dressed up like Kevin Spacey. That's the only thing I can think of. Balding or or it's Tom Cruise from Thunder. Wait, Tropical yes, Thunder. Yes, Tropical Thunder. And I want him doing an interview. And that's it. It's just him. You don't even see the guy, the interviewee. It's just him talking at the camera. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. It's a good idea. Write it down. Look at this. It's it's in the podcast. It's on the record. Boom. So we can go, hey, what was that idea? And I'll go, let me skip. And I got to skip through an hour and go, okay, that's, that's oh, it. Oh, that's right. Kevin Spacey. That's it. That's it. That's what we're doing. That's awesome, man. Um, Let's see. What else can we cover? I want to make sure that we, we got we got some time. Boom. We got a little bit of time. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. And now with content, you know, constantly needing content, if you don't create six albums in two weeks – 
people just stop listening. Yeah. Oh, that's a great song, and they literally skip it on Spotify yeah. and they listen to another song. Yeah. It's not like where you know the, it was on top charts I for was twenty years. Just thinking about how somehow iTunes is like losing. It's outdated. iTunes yeah. is over, and and I just thought about the same thing the other day with Spotify is. When you when you go to an artist's page on Spotify, it asks you to like the page so you get updates from the artist when they make new music. What's the point of up liking that page from someone from this generation's mind? What's the point of liking that page when you know they're not going to put out content every week? You know what I mean? Exactly. You're not going to get update being, oh, oh, Hootie and the Blowfish new album, <laughs> and then and then uh, and then you're like, wow, I've been waiting for this. For a week and a half, and they finally put it out. I cannot believe it. Hootie, you did it again. Hootie, you did it with and without the bluefish. It's just just Hootie. I'd like to see Hootie branch off again, and instead he he forms another band, different people, and it's called Hootie and the Bluefish. And And the blowfish get pissed. Yeah. He's like, what? (laughs) What? Two two letters. Two letters. You bastard, Hootie. Is it plural? There's multiple bluefish, or is it just... The blowfish. The blowfish. The blowfish. Is it Hootie and the... Who who are you? Hootie? 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 Yeah. Hoot, gotta gotta hoot. go at nighttime. Ho, ho. The ho. <laughs> Squeak. Um, what is it called? Oh, you know what's even funny, too? Like, kind of nostalgic. Like, every... If they come off the new Pokemon game, I buy it. And I play it. And it's the same game every time. But I just keep playing it. I'm just like, you yeah. And, and then, but I always tell myself, oh, like, Red was the best. Like, Pokemon <laughs> Red was, like, the absolute best. And then I'll, like, get, the, like, the ROM version. I go, eh, I'm going to go, like, get some lunch. Like, just, like, don't play it anymore. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's Hall and Oats. They branch off. Hall about that bass and Oats and Hoes. <laughs> All right, next subject. <laughs> oat cereal. Just Oats. Just Oats. Just the Oats. Just the Oats. <laughs> Um, so yes, you're doing that, you're doing good, the girlfriend's doing good, um, yeah, I mean, I guess there's anything that you were kind of thinking of, I mean, I, I, I do think that if we even did a podcast like this, mm-hmm. and we started to, you know, come up, it doesn't be so much ideas, but it's like, yeah. just talk about, even just like about our week. Yeah. Because that was another thing that I think was really pulling me into podcasts. Yes. Is podcasts going, tying way back into content. Yes. You can create content all the time, and at the same time, it's not like a crappy six-second vine, but you can actually have, like, jokes and thoughts and a little bit of creativity. The reason I like doing it, or the reason I was was interested when we started talking about it, was because I thought about, I I think I'm funny. It's egotistical, but that's why people make funny videos or do stand-up, because they personally think they're funny, and so I think this is an outlet for me to be funny. And, and I think that's with just talk. I don't think I'm, as far as I've tried, necessarily scripted funny. I think I'm funny in the way where things that piss me off is funny to other people. Yes. Whatever it might be, in whatever that is. So, so that's why I agree. That's why I was interested. Yeah, and I think even just something as simple as like this, like, hey, I'm going to come over for mm-hmm. like an hour or two. Let's just crank something out. It's so much easier than when we would dedicate like – a whole entire day mm-hmm. and um, we had to stop filming because it got dark and so the lighting was different and you can't add enough filters to no. make the make God 5 p.m. All. in the winter look like new. without any lighting no yeah it was bad <laughs> it was bad and then like yeah could you imagine i mean scheduling a full day video now is is so much and with me like you know i'm even pickier now yeah than I was when I was younger. I was like, oh, that's fine. And then you watch it, oh, that's crap. Who cares? You, know, you just made something just to make it. Yeah. You know, whereas like with the podcast, it's like just kind of get up and go. Yes. We can do it. So hopefully we will create more of a show. Yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by, Richie. Technically, I stopped by your house. And don't ever your, come back. In your basement. Don't ever come back. Great. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go.